I am Doomsvince, and this is day 115 of Spawn Year. Yesterday's issue was deeply focused on further exploring and developing our characters while introducing a new mystery, and even though not a whole lot technically happens in terms of events, there was plenty going on within the interpersonal relationships to keep me engaged. This issue, not so much. That's the trouble with writing about these one at a time. Last entry, I said Sam and Twitch should be a TV show. Imagine having to critique each section of a TV episode between the commercial breaks without a sense of the whole story. When this arc is over and I can look at it as a complete piece, some of the scenes here might not seem so overly drawn out or superfluous, and they might suddenly become more necessary than they seemed at first glance. When Bendis opens this issue with a five-page, long-winded speech by the new precinct sergeant to all the rookies, talking about their duty as officers, that the police are a business and tax-paying citizens are providing their salaries, so if they don't provide that service and allow themselves to be corrupted like so much of the force before the Udaku case, they'll be immediately dismissed. Is that scene establishing a new supporting character Bendis plans to explore? Or is it an uneconomical way to show the new status quo in the precinct? It's certainly important to address. Sam and Twitch have had a hugely positive effect on the force, almost completely ridding it of dirty cops, and she even credits them with that. And it also reminds us they're not only famous, but also two of the top veterans with the most experience because so many corrupt cops had to be replaced with rookies. But again, did the speech need to take up so much space? Why couldn't Doomsvince let me read a whole arc and then write my critiques? He must have known reviewing stories in such small chunks would be really aggravating. Must be part of the torture. This would be ridiculous with any other complete narrative broken up into manageable sections. Imagine being thrown in a graveyard and reviewing chapters of a book every day or acts of a play. Even episodes of a serialized TV show are often more self-contained than this. But comics are published in issues first, and I guess Doomsvince had to stretch to get 365 days of material, so I'm looking at them one at a time. Wow, now I'm doing it. I'm stretching for time because this issue is too decompressed. There's not much to say beyond this issue is decompressed, so now I'm using a lot more words than I need to explain that. All right, concise and to the point. Here goes. Most of this issue is investigation. Sam, Twitch, and CJ are called to another crime scene, and they know it's a related murder to the Wiccans in the park because, like them, this victim has salt packed into all the wounds. Odd that no one points out the obvious metaphor, and CJ believes that because of the way the bodies are presented after the slayings, the perpetrator is trying to get caught. Sam and Twitch talk to the Wiccan girl again, rehashing the same conversation they had last issue for no good reason, and then we get two full pages of random people reacting to the news of the loss of their friend or loved one in the Wiccan murders as Sam and Twitch question people at their homes. This seems completely unnecessary, and I really doubt if Bendis is setting up anything with random people saying, how awful, or I just can't understand, to be paid off later. There's another bit of Sam and Twitch questioning pagan girls to illustrate they're not getting anywhere in their investigation, and I guess to show that Twitch is having almost as tough a time connecting with people of another lifestyle and religion than his own as Sam is. I don't know, he sure didn't look this nervous in the same situation last issue, but it is pretty funny and completely in character when Sam blurts out, you guys eat a lot of salt with your food? A pagan police officer shows Sam and Twitch the Book of Shadows and explains that salt might, for whatever reason, have to do with the salt of the earth. They go to a celebration of the vernal equinox, hoping to find more clues, and that's about it. Like all this book so far, the dialogue feels real and it's all well written, but I don't think everything here is necessarily furthering the narrative. There's also not so much exposition about the investigation, considering they don't get very far with it, that Bendis couldn't have devised ways to do more of that engaging character stuff from last issue, and so this one feels pretty padded out. But I'm fully expecting to read issue 12 and say, oh, that's why that had to be there. Kind of makes me long for more movie and video game reviews. They're a little more work, but it doesn't feel like trying to find the meaning or symbolism of a painting when you're only looking at the bottom left-hand corner of the piece. Signed, Captain Logan. <laughs> 